76 of Ryan go down, boy. Let me tell you, that was one hell of a race, pal. Oh man, it's just uh, crazy. It's surreal. It's uh, it's everything that Freedom 76 is about, right? So, you know, we've lost a lot of these, and you know, we ran good and got second before, but never in a million years I thought I'd make it finally to, to break through here. Before we get to the race, man, I, mean, I noticed in warm-ups the car seemed like it was really good. And, uh, you know, the heat race were really super good. I'm, I'm taking the cash dash since you were in the back. You just pretty much use it as a test session. Yeah, what we did, we filled it up with fuel like we were going to be for the feature. And then we just, uh, you know, tried a couple little things to see if it would be better. And, and it wasn't. It was worse. And I said, no big deal. That's why... You know, it didn't matter. So if we would have started in the front at Cash Dash, we would have just kept it the way it was in the heat and went. But, you know, it's probably a blessing that we did it that way and we didn't really mess the car up. I mean, these cars, these new style cars now are just, you can mess them up pretty easy. So it's all about being consistent and standard. So, um, you know, we just went what we know and not went where the unknown was, if that makes any sense. Because, you know, these things are very finicky when it comes to what a full fuel load and, you know, from the heat race to the feature, you got to account for everything like that. Yeah, you know, we've talked, you know, we talk a lot over the year, and I remember when you won the Thunder on the Hill race here a few, you know, back in June, I guess it was, you know, we talked afterwards, and you said, you're not racing as much, but you're prepared. Did that play in, you know, play into what happened tonight? Well, I mean, listen, you know, we're actually down to one, that's the only motor we have left, and we have, you know, that, we have another car, but we don't have a motor for it yet, we're waiting on pistons, and you know, doing the best we can and getting some more stuff together. But, uh, you know, my, my our game plan this year, we had to start a whole new team this year. We had a lot of great people behind me to get me into that. And the biggest thing is, you know, we wanted to start off strong at your Saturday night home track. You know, we're doing the Deo stuff. We're still playing with that. We ain't really there where we want to be yet either. But, uh, you know, we wanted to get our home track stuff done, travel very little bit, but be 110% prepared when we went. And when we came here for Thunder on a Hill show, you know, listen, we picked good in that uh, midweek show in the feature and that helped but you know here 11th I mean I didn't know two ways to come about and you had Jeff Strunk right in front of you I mean the best in the business here and you know it's just uh it's just you know you keep working hard and we kept grinding every week and you know, we probably prepped for this race probably within the last two weeks on getting ready even though we had a championship weekend you know we went through the whole car thoroughly and you know now we got to go through obviously get ready for the next race next week and um it's just you know bunch of good guys behind me and you know even like uh danny's pizza what giving us a backup car bridgeport and you know running with him certain shows here and there right now and trying to get his stuff you know where it needs to be where, where our stuff is and you know he's there are a bunch of good guys and we're all still working together but you know he stepped up give me a backup car here or there and stuff and that helps because it takes pressure off you when you go to a racetrack so you know it's just uh you know we just it, it's I don't, I don't know what to say you, know, you got the sponsors you got the guys in the shop my brother is a is a beast when it comes to going over the motors and and taking care of all that intricate stuff with the electrical and the, the motors i mean our stuff is like hot rod stuff when you take the hood off it's just uh you know it takes a lot of passion you need that here you know what i mean mike carlucci you're in the shop uh you know we're just you know digging away with the shock program digging away with the spring program you know you see you talk to all these guys tonight and they said ah we want bars left side are good goods you know but in a 76 or like this with a long race i think coils don't change as much and you know maybe on a weekly deal maybe bars left side here would be good but i knew on a long race if i can get there i'd be okay yeah. now when you get to the race you started 11th and you moved up steadily quickly yeah. early on and then you were right there on the re you got the third and then strunk made that move on the restart and went between all of you and ended up leading the race well, you know, in the beginning of that race, I said, you know, there ain't nobody better to try to save your stuff with than Jeff, right? I mean, if we could follow Jeff through and see how it goes from there, I said, you know, that's going to be the best thing to do. He's won how many 80s? You know, eight of them. So I said, we're going to follow him until we get a chance. And, you know, I it really burns me a little bit because before that, the top started coming in and nobody went up there. And I wanted to. I wanted to. And then they started going up there. And then I thought I lost my chance. And I had a good restart and got Jeff. And then, like you said, that restart where he was fourth. I wanted to get to the middle going into one, and I kind of just say protected, yeah. and I seen it, and I was so mad at myself for making that half a lean shy because you can't let a guy like that capitalize on a, on a race because it just he's so good, it's hard to get him back, you know. Right. So, but then you know you got there, you had a couple of restarts there. He got you in a couple of restarts, but that last restart where you took the lead, man, you timed that perfectly. Yeah, and I don't know how, man. Listen, and I, you know, back of my head, I know my son's in the bleachers yelling at me on his restarts because we both yell at each other on restarts, but. uh it's like, man, if I could just time one because I can get through the center of three and four just as good as he could, I thought maybe I had a shot, and it did. It stuck, and he kind of spun the wheels a little bit in the middle, and I was able to get to, you know, next to him here. It was just, uh, 
then I knew down here I was going to be okay through the middle because I just had a little bit more momentum. And then it's now I could dictate open air. My car is way better in open air than it was trying to follow him. Yeah, and then, you know, you got a, you got a decent lead there. And then uh, it probably would have benefited you to have another, at least one more caution to, you know, get, so you could clear out them lap cars. Yeah, you know, listen, and, and Grandview, they did a good job on the radio telling the guys that we're coming, we're coming. And, uh, you know, I got to top my hat to Mike Goulart because he moved right out of the way. He didn't want to dictate no race like that. But a guy like Ray Swinehart should know better. It's just, but, you know, listen, they're running for position. I get it. But, you know, you got a, a, a prestigious race on the line. You don't want to. You know, crap up the finish because of that. But, you know, listen, it played out. I tried to get next to him. Obviously, he didn't know I was the leader because he just tried to keep going hammer down. But whatever it is. And I tucked in. When I got up next to him and I kind of got a little free off, I says, man, it's taking rubber on the bottom. It just kept getting freer and freer. I says, if I don't get back down there, Jeff's going to fill the hole. And I says, listen, let me just stay down there. If I see him, then I'll worry about it. If I don't see him, I'm just going to stay here behind Ray and ride it out. Yep. So, you know, you've won some big races in your career. Uh, my guess is this is probably the biggest one. Yeah, you ain't kidding. I mean, you're right. I mean, we've run the Cold Cracker, we've run the Forest Riders here, and now this. It's just, uh, it's crazy to think that you could win all three, um, just in, in what we do and how many races we come here and, and Big Diamond. You know, like like you said, we don't race a whole lot, but when we try to come here, we try to come prepared and try to come like we know what we're doing when we get here instead of just coming here and not having our stuff together and, you know, shock package right or tires right or whatever right. Yeah, I mean, you raced here as a regular years ago, but, you know, you've been at Bridgeport and Ouija for a lot of years. But to come back here and win this race, and, uh, you know, it, what's it mean to Ryan go down the driver? It means a lot. It does. You know, listen, when you come here and you, you run second to Howard the one year when we got second, and you know, I think we got a couple of top fives there. But, you know, and then we've led some and lost it and, you know, some heartbreakers. But uh, it's like I said, i got to suck it in. I don't really know. I probably won't really believe it till tomorrow if somebody pinches me. So i just so happy and so happy for my guys and so happy for all my sponsors and just everybody to be a part of it. It's just that's what makes it all about and be cool to me. Right. Uh, you know, who would you like to thank, you know, for the guy you here? I know you have a lot of people behind you, and, you know, they're worth a shout-out for sure. Roger from Camp Out, Kathy from Camp Out, uh, Montrose Molders, Ellery's Bar and Grill, TMI Truck and Crescent Hydraulics, Izzy Truck and Strober Wright Roofing, Arch Radiator, uh, Bicknell Racing Products, Billy the Kid Engines. I mean, he makes my life this year so much easier. Um, and I don't want to forget nobody. Just see Jones, you know, uh, racing products and just all them, you know, Mark Blackwell and Blue Hen, um, Jamie Mills. And, like, you know, I can go on and on. And these guys, little bits just keep getting you. And it's just, uh, you know, it's fun. you got a whole bunch of good people behind you, and it's it's pretty cool. Yeah, it is pretty cool. I mean, it takes a lot of people to make this all work, and you know, to win a big race it takes really good people behind you. And uh, I, for one, am you know very happy for you. you. Lost your voice, I can see that. Yeah, you know, we we're I took the checker. I didn't think didn't think I stopped yelling, but uh, you know, plus I got I got to thank my girlfriend Chelsea. I mean, she she lets me do it in the shop so many hours and not too much complaining. She knows what the racing's all about, and you know, it's just it's fun to be Ryan going out right now. I got a beautiful daughter. My son's racing, and it's pretty fun right now. It's just uh, I'm sucking it all in. Yeah, Ryan going down is a pretty good spot right now. Yeah, that's it. We just got to keep rolling. Hopefully, we do good next week. Yeah. All right, once again, I'm Ken Bruce here with Dirt Track Digest, and we're here with Ryan Godown, winner of the Freedom 76er. Yeah.